and today we're in the garage and we are going to rebuild my friend's MS290. Uh, if you remember about a month ago, we did a video on uh, diagnosing a chainsaw that uh, just won't start. And it came down that it needed a new piston and cylinder for this one. I ordered it up and it took forever to come in. It just came in, so we're gonna rebuild it today. So let's go. It's an MS290. Uh, this is the kit I got. Uh, it's not Farmer Tech. It was the only one I could find. So here is the kit. Uh, that's your uh, piston, cylinder, and rings. A lot of people have complained that the rings end up breaking when you go to put them on the piston. So we're going to be very careful with that. Um, but, I mean, you can't tell how good the cylinder is, but it looks pretty good. So there's the cylinder, we're going to start tearing down the saw. coil cover, the chain brake, and the handle. It's a T27 socket. Lift the pull cord cover off. Oh, there is a lot of sawdust in there. We're going to go to this side. I'm going to remove these two torques. That hold that little cover on. Pop the chain wear guard off and this cover. I just use a screwdriver to pop the end of the spring off. Here you got a little E clip. You got to pop that off without losing it. You grab that, put it in a safe place. Now you lift this up and then you slide it forward and that little link pops off. There is a tiny spacer that goes on that shaft and you take that off. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop this E-clip off. Make sure you don't lose any of the parts. Put it in a safe place. There you go, that came off. There's a little bearing you take off. Right in here, I'm just gonna pry up, get the uh, chain brake band off, and we're just gonna lift the whole thing out of here. Okay, so there you go, that's off. We're gonna remove the handle. We're gonna take these screws out. these screws okay so now we're gonna have to remove these caps here they can be a little tough sometimes you get two screwdrivers really difficult There we go, that one's out. You got a screw in there and a screw in there. Okay, over, get those screws out. Okay, so now you have one more here. Wow. That is great. 
That landed way over there. And there you go, the handle comes off. We're gonna remove the exhaust. Make sure you don't lose, there's washers on the studs. Make sure you don't lose them. You got the exhaust off, so now you just pop this clip out. We're gonna remove the carburetor. thing out. Stick the vent over there for now. Okay, so now you flip it over. You got to remove the uh, screw inside the handle there. After you get the screw out, you just pop the handle top off, pop the throttle linkage out, unhook it off the carburetor, pull on the carburetor, and it'll slide out. Set that in a safe spot. Remove the ring. You pop this little tin ring out and you shove without poking it. Don't poke. Don't poke a hole in this rubber thing because it'll suck air and you blow up your new motor. So you have to shove this line back through the hole. This has to be curled into itself so your intake pipe will slide through the plastic. And then here, this little rubber grommet, once you take the plastic uh, piece out, it's kind of the same thing. It gives you enough room to shove it through. So now you just give it a little bit of a pry and it pops off the front grommet. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop this lever out of here. Slide it out. And then this will be slid forward and then it just slides out. We're just gonna unhook that here and they got that little grommet right there. We shove it through and there's the handle, the handle's off. Okay, so now we're gonna remove this cover, uh, remove this screw and that screw. And that just pops off. We're gonna blow all the dust out of the chainsaw. Make sure you wear your safety glasses. Now we're gonna remove these four bolts. There's one down here, 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 and here. So these are T27 torque sockets. We're gonna pull up on it, but I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth just a little bit. And we're just gonna slide that out. Okay, so this is why a chainsaw has low compression. The ring is fully stuck in the piston. Uh, so we're gonna remove the piston, we're gonna clean up the gasket surface, and we're gonna start installing the new one. We're going to take the wire off this cylinder. We're going to put it on the new one. Um, make sure you do that before you install the cylinder uh, because otherwise you have to take the flywheel off. Okay, 
so we got the old chainsaw cylinder and we're going to remove the intake boot and you got to make sure that you take a good look at that you don't want nicks or cracks in the intake boot because what will happen is the chainsaw will run lean and then you can end up blowing your new cylinder so you don't want that so make sure you take a good look at it it looks real good i don't see any problem with it Okay, that looks really good. So now we're gonna remove the piston and we have to remove a little snap ring on your wrist pin. Oh, there you go. Okay, so then you just tap it out. It's really important when you're removing the piston that you kind of support the piston when you're tapping it out. You don't want to just have the piston loose there and hitting it. You're just hitting against the uh, connecting rod. You don't want to do that. So you just kind of support it while you tap it out. Okay, so you're going to have a new piston. It'll have an arrow on it, and that's got to point to the exhaust port. Look at the ring. There is an angle to the ring, and that angle matches up to the pin that's in the piston. So you have to make sure you match those up. You got to make sure you match those up when you put it in. Um, because it's just not going to fit right. What we're going to do with the ring is just expand it enough to get it over the piston. Uh, we're not going to use ring expanders or anything because I've seen online that uh, these rings might not be as good as the original ones and you can't use ring expanders. If you use ring expanders on the cheaper Chinese uh, rings, uh, they end up breaking, I've heard. So uh, we're going to try to make sure that that isn't going to happen. Okay, so we got them. And they're going to be lined up with the pin when they're closed. One there, one there. And your arrow is going to go towards your exhaust port. You'll have a package with little C-clips. I am going to install one first. So there you go. So the far, far side one, I put it in. We're going to um, clean up the gasket sealant that's here. See this little groove? Make sure you clean that out. Um, that little groove is important. It's meant to hold the silicone in it and make a nice seal. So just make sure that that's all cleaned out. Okay, so after I clean this up, we're going to use some compressed air. We're going to blow out the bottom end. Make sure if any silicone got down there, that it'll just blow it out. It really can't hurt much, but uh, you try to keep everything as clean as possible. With the kit, they didn't give a new wrist pin bearing. Technically, it's running in the old connecting rod anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I'm going to throw a little oil on it and put it in the connecting rod. Okay, so that one sits there. So you don't want to hold the wrist pin too long uh, because the heat of your hands will make it expand. Um, I'm going to give it a little shove and push it in. Put the new snap ring in. You gotta make sure that it's fully in the groove. Uh, you don't want them coming loose. I'm gonna put a light coating of engine oil on the cylinder just so it slides easier. So I'm using three bond to seal up the base gasket. Nice bead of three bond on that little line. in the block. And we're gonna spread it out just a little bit. Make sure it's fully coated. I'm gonna use a little bit of two stroke oil for the cylinder. 
I'll just cover the cylinder with some two-stroke oil. Okay, so you want to make sure the rings are somewhat lined up with those pins. Like that. And like kind of just gently work it. Until it slides in. You don't want to force it in any way. So once the rings are lined up, you just gently slide it down. So we're going to tip it over and reinstall those uh, screws. Okay, so tighten them in until they're just snug and then evenly tighten them. There probably is an actual torque for it, but uh, I've never had any trouble uh, doing them by hand. You just got to make sure that you uh, evenly tighten them. Don't just tighten one up. So there you go, you got your nice new cylinder on. Now we have to start putting this all back together. This top guard, we're gonna reinstall that. Oh my gracious, kind of awkward. Okay. Okay, so this hole here is where the wires go up through. So we're gonna shove the wires up through the hole. You know, I find still chainsaws are a lot harder to fix than uh, Husqvarna. It just seems like they make um, the way the saw is put together much more difficult to actually fix. Uh, still makes great chainsaws, uh, but they definitely don't always think about fixing them. I guess they think you don't have to fix them. Okay, so now your fuel line comes up through the center. There's a little grommet that goes around the wires. You have to try to uh, stick into the uh, breather box. It's just to keep a bunch of the sawdust and everything out. Now your intake grommet is right here. And you got to try to squish it together and pop it through the hole. And that's easier said then done. Get a pair of needle nose. Make sure you don't rip the intake boot because that really would not be very good. Now you got the rubber, it's through. Okay, so now you put the ring on and the fish is around here. You got a little tin clip and you shove it in. And basically, that tin clip makes it impossible for that uh, intake pipe to collapse to ever come out of there. So when that's installed, this plate's installed, we put the carburetor, this can't come out of the housing very easily. This front rubber mount, you have to fish the rubber mount in. So you push in on this and keep poking till you get the rubber to come through and sit in the notch. And you take one of these smooth clips and you shove it in place and it keeps that from popping out. Make sure the intake tube's in place. This is your pulse line. Make sure those rings are in place. Now we're just gonna shove the carburetor on. Make sure that they line up with the rubbers, if they don't, you have to shove down. And tighten them up. Okay, so now you get the uh, yellow wire. You shove it in between here. We'll hook the wire to the blade terminal. And then we're going to shove this. This wire hooks onto the handle, so we'll leave it here for now. You get your choke lever. And this metal clip here goes underneath it. Throw the linkage on. 
Okay, so it goes in here. And then it pops into there. Plug it on your return line first. We're going to squish that in there on the top of the carburetor. So there you go. We are ready to put the back of the handle on. There you go. We're going to flip it over. It is going into plastic, so don't tighten it up too crazy. Okay, so now that's on. This is for your kill switch. We slide this in to its position. So when you go to shut it off, that tab hits here. We'll throw that on. We'll put the air filter in place. Okay, choke on, half choke, and start. It all works. I'm going to throw the uh, recoil cover back on it. I'm clean this out good. Okay. You might as well throw the exhaust manifold on. The bolts have little squares. You slide them in behind the slots. You throw the gasket on, throw a washer on each one, the exhaust is on, it's starting to look like a chainsaw. So now we're going to install the chain brake, make sure that the spring is on that lever. First thing you're going to do is get this piece of the uh, chain brake and slide it in here and you're going to line up with that hole you're going to try to put it over onto this pin you're going to have to spread it just a little bit and on this side you just kind of get this up into place and pull on this till that lines up you got this lever in that little valley of the plastic uh, handle. The spring is installed. This piece goes through the handle and is around the uh, pin. So now you hook this in here. Slide this whole piece in place. And then shove it in there. So there you go. So that is what it looks like. You got that piece on with the spring. You got your chain brake around here. It's pushed over your pivot pin through your handle. So you get this little plastic spacer and it goes on to here. And then you got this piece, which is just a retaining clip and it slides on here and then just pops over. So there's a little tiny E-clip you put on and be careful you don't lose it. It will go. There you go. So that's all installed. Now I'm gonna hook, we're gonna hook the spring on here. And I find the easiest way to get this installed is kind of get a, get a, a screwdriver. Kind of get it like this. There you go, she clips on like that. When you're all done, that's what it looks like. You got your E-clip on, your spring's installed. Uh, everything is ready to go. And you're gonna have one of these sleeves, you slide them in, and you put your screw in. Little tin cover. That actually it just covers up the whole chain brake and keeps it clean. That it can't fill up with uh, sawdust and shavings. Just clean that off. There's two smaller screws. That's what holds them in. Okay. 
Okay. Make sure the chain brake works. You can see it's on there now. It's off. I'm gonna throw just a little bit of oil on this bearing. We're gonna put that on there. There's a little tiny spring that sticks out and it lines up with this on the drum and you try to line it up. And make sure that it's sitting on that knot. We're gonna throw the gear on. This little tin clip and E-clip. And we're gonna shove this on, but make sure you don't stab your finger or lose the clip. There you go. Now we're gonna check that the chain brake works. Won't turn. Turns good. Okay. You've got these little chain guards. We're gonna install them. One goes here. And one goes here. Okay, so now we're gonna fish the saw around till it sits nicely in place. You've got your longer screws. I'm not gonna tighten anything up too, too much. We're just going to uh, just get them started in place, get them to line up. There's one up here. There's two on the bottom. Okay, so we got two more right here. One goes right here. It's actually easier to have it sitting like this. See if it's lined up. Ah, oh, it's lined up. Tighten that one up. Hook it on there. Uh. Chain a bit. So there you go, I got it all back together. Uh, we're gonna throw some fresh gas in it and I'm going to uh, run the saw and make sure that it isn't running lean. You don't wanna go to the bother rebuilding it and then it ends up running lean and then fry a new cylinder. So we're gonna try to see if we can just adjust it, make sure that it's running good before I give it back to my friend. got the chainsaw up and running it runs awesome I'm gonna to try to adjust the carburetor a little bit I think I'm gonna put a little bit to the rich side at least for break-in purposes and you get to see if it actually can run to the rich side uh, because there's nothing worse than rebuilding a chainsaw and then there's another problem like there's a uh, your carburetors plugged up or some other thing like that I'm gonna see if I can actually run this on the weekend a little bit I uh, make sure that's running good before I give it back to them so that's about enough for today. You guys have a good one.